Alright guys, once again, we're going to graph a quadratic using everything we know about quadratic so far. We're going to use the discriminant. We're going to find the x-intercept through the quadratic formula. We're going to do the y-intercept. We're going to do the vertex, everything possible that we can. So here we go. Let's use the discriminant first. So the discriminant equals b squared minus 4ac. So if we identify first, we've got a is negative 2, we've got b equals 4, and we've got c equals negative 2, right? Negative, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is the negative 2, b is the 4, c is the minus 2. We go ahead and put those in. So we'll have 4 squared minus 4 times a times c. 4 squared is 16. I got negative 4 times negative 2, which is positive 8. And then 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. I do 16 minus 16, and I got 0. So the discriminant equals 0. Now what does that mean? That means that there is only one x-intercept. Now that tells us a couple of things, other than the fact that there's one x-intercept. We talked about in class how if there's one x-intercept, that's also going to be the vertex. Because if it wasn't the vertex, then it should be reflected and there should be two of them. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll look at it and, and make some sense of it. So the discriminant being one x-intercept, we'll go ahead now and do the quadratic formula to get the x-intercept. Remember the x-intercept occurs when y equals 0. So I go 0 equals negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 2. So I go x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which I already found that was 0, right? 0 was b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. And so then we can simplify. We can take the square root of 0. So we'll have negative 4 plus or minus 0 over 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. And so I got negative 4 plus 0, negative 4 minus 0, both of which is negative 4 over 4, which is 1. So my x-intercept is going to be 1, comma 0. So I go ahead and put my x-intercept down right there. What do you want to do next? You want to do y-intercept? OK, let's do the y-intercept next y-intercept is when x equals 0, so we go y equals negative 2 times 0 squared plus 4 times 0 minus 2. This times 0 will be 0, 4 times 0 is 0, leaving us with y equals negative 2, because 0 plus 0 minus 2 will be negative 2, so that will be my y-intercept there. Um, we need our vertex and uh, axis of symmetry. Um, now we talked about before that because there's only one x-intercept that will also be the vertex. We can check that. We can go vertex. We know the x value of the vertex is negative b over 2a. So we go negative b over 2a and we got negative 4 over negative 4 which is 1. If the x value of the vertex is 1 that means if I put 1 in for x I should end up getting 0. That's what we already talked about. That's the x-intercept. So what I will do, though, is since we've confirmed that, I'll go ahead and draw my axis symmetry here. Now what we need to do is just make sure that our last step is to have five points. So I'm going to take this one right here. It's one space away from my axis symmetry. So I'm going to... I'm going to reflect it over on the other side. Now I need one more point. Um, Probably easiest to, you, you could do negative 1 if you want, you could do 3, you could really do any number, but remember the farther away you get, the chances of it being off the graph are, are much, much greater. So we need one more point. So I'm going to go ahead and put x equals 3 in, because that would be the next number, and that avoids having to use negative numbers. So we'll put x equals 3, so we'll go y equals negative 2 times 3 squared plus 4 times 3 minus 2. So y equals negative 2 times 3 squared is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. And then we've got y equals negative 18 plus 12 minus 2, which will give us a total of negative 8. So when x was 3, y was negative 8. So we put that down, 3, negative 8, and that kind of fits what we expect. 
right? It is upside down because of this negative right here. So that's why it's a n, it's a upside down u, kind of like an n. That point, if we reflect it, so two spaces away to the right, so I go two spaces away to the left. And so then I've got my quadratic graph, which should look something like this. And it's upside down because of the negative, and because of the two outside of the x squared, it's been stretched a little bit vertically, so it's a little bit skinnier than usual. So there you go. That's the answer to number three.